What is up, everyone? Welcome to Mission Fishing Live. I'm your host, Muto. Glad you could all be here. What's going on, everybody? Another beautiful Thursday. Hopefully, you're staying cool. Got that heat wave coming in. It's been warm. At least warm for me. I don't have air conditioning in my house. I don't know about you guys, but I guess they figured we didn't need it over here. I think if you're more inland, it's necessity, but over here, a little more coastal. It's not <laughs> We're out of luck. House was built in the 60s. No love. See who we got in the house today. Spinning Rod Rebel, Marvin. Welcome to the show. Saltwater Slayer. Oos, welcome. Zachary Riggs. Evening, everyone. I'm driving, so I'll wait to chat till I get home. We'll see you then, man. Benny Moreno. What's going on? Benny in the house. That's correct. Oos. Captain Dan. Oos. I'll catch the replay. I'm at a CCA call tonight for a banquet planning, and I'll get back. Be back if the meeting is short. Well, hopefully it's short. Love to have you, Captain Dan. But uh, those those banquets are fun. Hopefully it's a public one. We could all make it. TB Metal Art. What's up from Pismo Beach? What's going on, Todd? Check out tbmetalart.com. Made the beautiful slow pitch jig behind me. The slow death jig. I got to go to the see the workshop, see how it's done. I got to see how the sausage is made. It's pretty awesome. What are you doing up in Pismo, De- Pismo Beach? I've only been there one time. I went as a kid when I was like... My dad had a softball tournament up there. I don't know. It was pretty cool, though. I just remember they had, like, uh, went to some candy shop and got, like, saltwater taffy and stuff. But it was pretty cool. Nice place. Let's see who else we got in here. Aaron Kruger, DFA in the house. Welcome, DFA. Always welcome here. The Multi Fishing Club stream. Good to see you. Out there slaying, short pounding as usual. I'm assuming Big Water Yak Fishing. Ooh, welcome to the show. Cape Dog. Cal, what's going on, man? Cal, you weren't first today. Letting these guys get one up on you. Graham, oos, what's going on? Salty Dangler, oos. Going through the Mulligan Report. I'll be listening. Awesome, guys. If you guys are, are part of uh, Spotty Bowl, the Mulligan Report, Salty puts that together for us. It's um, You can find it in Discord. Basically, it just takes the uh, two lowest scores that you have and then compiles um, the list of the top scores because the your two lowest scores will come out. So it's basically, it'll be your top six scores at the end of the run. So you might think you have a big average, but your two lowest ones are going to come out. So really it's only your, your main ones that are going to count. So salty's putting in the work. Thank you. Salty Peter 86 moose. We'll take it. Noel, what's going on? Glad you could join us. Matthew H. Oos, welcome to the show. Glad you could be here. Sharp detailing. What's going on, man? Welcome John Escoval. The Slayer, the Tenth Street Slayer. Oos, welcome. Did you do sharp detailing? Sharp detailing, I got him. Kiwi reacts. Glad to have you back, man. Good to see you, Eric Klein. Eric Klein. Welcome. Hey, you made it. Glad you could be here, man. I think we got everybody. Iron Fish in the house. Welcome, Iron Fish. Heat wave on them yellows is coming in hot. Yeah, man. John De Jesus, what's going on, man? Welcome to the show. Oscar Oos, Big Water Rat, Yak Fishing, says, got work at 2 a.m. and decided to be a rebel and stay up and watch while I eat some ice cream and cool off. What kind of ice cream? What kind of ice cream? We should all guess. I'm guessing mint and chip. It'll balls. Welcome. Glad you can make it. Yeah, guys, for those of you that don't know, I mean, that is part of like the biggest news story, right? I mean, the yellow fin are here. I mean, not the yellow fin. I'm sorry. The blue fin are here. Uh, they're still a little deep. You know, they're down in Mexico. Um, although somebody caught one. Who was it? Uh, El Sueño, Doug. He's usually in the chat here. I don't see him yet, but uh, he sh- sent me a picture today. One of his buddies caught one. Not not too far um, on a little boat um, just south of, south of San Diego. So they were having to go deeper and deeper, but they're moving their way up. Uh, I think it's going to be probably a lot like last year. Um, if you guys were here fishing the bluefin, they were pretty much here. I don't think they ever left, honestly. They've been at Tanner uh, Bank. They've been, you know, further west, and they never really went away. But now they're, like, starting to circle up south again. Uh, just like last year, they came in, and we were seeing them, like, hot and heavy in June, uh, May and June. I think they're almost a little earlier this year. At least the bite's been on fire. Um, yellowtail, too. The yellowtail bite's been good. So... Everybody's out in La Jolla looking for those. They're at the islands, obviously. So yellowtail are blowing up. A bluefin are here. So it's coming in. Everybody's getting excited for 
the fishing season. When I say the fishing season, but you know, people like myself and a lot of you guys in the chat, we we fish. I fish every single weekend. I don't care. I think I did fish every weekend. Doesn't matter. December, January, February, I'm out there. At least looking for something. And I've been finding them. But I know a lot of people, um, you know, they, they wait. A lot of the casual people, which is, is cool too. Um, you know, they don't start coming out till summer or late spring when the big stuff starts coming in. So now you're starting to see the boats, you know, pack up. Everybody's getting excited. Everybody's getting that tuna fever. But um, yeah, by all accounts, man, they're here. The day and a half trips, uh, 1.35 day trips, they're pretty much already booked up. Dave Rage, I know, went out. He's in the chat here a lot. Um, he went out and got on a couple of bluefin. I think last week he went on a trip, went on a day and a half, and man, he got after him. Blueberry cobbler from Handles Ice Cream in San Marcos. Awesome. Big Water, I need a uh, report on the Handles. We are just talking about that. Jessica's birthday's tomorrow. So she was just talking. We were, right before we came on, we were, I was like, we we're like, what do you want? She's like, I don't know. Maybe I want Handles Ice Cream. We've never been there. So I heard it's good. So what's better, Handles or like Cold Stone? Jesse Oos, welcome to the show. Glad you could join us. Let's see what we got here. Matthew H says so he's going on his first 1.5, July 8th. Hoping for them. Yeah, dude. Good luck. Um, July 8th, uh, probably you might be into the yellowfin and dorado, but oh, it, de- it depends. So, like, typically the bluefin come in. The yellowtail, are, they kind of stick around. They, they don't, they're not as finicky. Like the bluefin will come in with the colder water. Traditionally, they come in spring and then they leave sort of beginning of summer. And then when it really heats up and then late uh, summer, midsummer, July, August, September, you're usually into the yellowfin tuna um, and the dorado, you know, looking for patties, yellowtail on patty. But you never know. The bluefin, they stuck around all last year, which was not real typical, but. You never know. July is a good time to go, though, just because the water's warm in general and just fish. They'll eat. The fish will eat. It was good stuff. Hopefully you guys get on them. But yeah, yellowfin Dorado was rough last year. I think the water just stayed cold. Then we had the bluefin. But bluefin are hard to catch, man. They're, when they eat, they eat. You can get on them. But when they're finicky, yeah, it's a pain in the ass. It's a heartbreaker sometimes. I think. Hopefully it's not like it this year. Hopefully they just eat. Oh man, we got some got some insider information here. Don't know if you've noticed, but the Vena are starting to come into the bay uh, for the smelt spawn. But they put up a good show at Spanish Landing last night. I got them to eat small glide bait. Yeah, that's a that's a good tip, Aaron. For those of you guys that don't know, um, he's talking about the Corvina that we get in um, we get in the bay, and <clears throat> Corvina is an interesting fish because they're. A lot of people don't like talking about them or like where they find them um, stuff like that. It's not that big of a deal. They're just, they're on the top water. <laughs> you can get them in San Diego Bay, but they're not really, um, they're not regulated here because they're not a, like an indigenous, indigenous fish to San Diego. So they're not regulated by like the sport fishery. There's been some movements to try to get them like a sp- size limit and stuff. They've been here like forever now, years and years, but they came in one year I think it was like during a hurricane or El Nino or something like years ago. I, I don't know if it was like the nineties or early two thousand, but then they never really left. Um, but they're kind of sporadic and spotty. So um, they're good eating. Um, but that depends who you ask, you know, some people, it, I don't know. Fishermen are crazy. They get really touchy about Corvina spots and stuff, um, but they're pretty, um, pretty elusive fish, but they're out there. Um, like Aaron was saying, Spanish landing, they were out there, um, I know Eric was catching them at America's Cup last year. Uh, you can you can get them a lot of places in um, where's it tide lens. I've seen them off the shore there, but um, they're cool fish. They got like little vampire fangs, so you don't want to lip those things. Um, kind of slender, like a barracuda. And the only downside to the corvina, like when you're catching them, is that they have their mouth is very it's very fragile and sensitive. So it's like a lot of times if you're like if you catch them on a treble hook it's almost like that fish is gone. I mean, it's, it just tears their mouth up. And when you you know, set the hook too hard, you can even just rip through their mouth. So that's something to be aware of too. If you're fishing Corvina, you saying you're throwing a uh, jerk bait, just reel it in. If you get bit, they'll stick to it. You don't need to, you don't need to pull that thing. Like you're, you know, 
swinging up trying to set the hook on a halibut or anything um they'll just they'll fall into the hook and be fine so you rip too hard you just you rip their lips right off uh, and you'll lose it and the fish will probably die anyway so that's the only thing they're delicate so if you want to catch and release um maybe don't use the treble hooks if you if you're going to keep it go ahead use the treble hook but um just don't don't do the don't do the crazy man set on that thing you know what i'm talking about where you're going like from six to twelve <laughs> on the clock with the with the hook set it's unnecessary but that's cool man so that's yeah, so lots lots of good fish coming in if corvina are here well i heard about giant barracuda popping off um people posting pictures of those uh in mission bay they were a lot of times you find them in la jolla i mean every everything's coming in guys this is one of the it's what we live in san diego for and fish for right and that huge diverse fishery comes in um for me it'd be nice to catch something besides a sand bass for so long that's that's what it boils down to like after once rockfish closes you get like those two three months of winter it's like <sighs> it's like we're fishing bass um yeah good stuff though handles is a thousand times better than cold stone it's a bold claim dude cold stone's pretty good cold stone is pretty damn good handles is head down better than cold Stone. okay that's two we're two for two all right guys all right we might have to go do that iron fish what's up brother just got to, oh talking to benny nice dude Eric Klein, what's going on, man? Don't know if I greeted you. I totally agree. Handles as far as free. Wow. I, that's crazy. I mean, Cold Stone, I, I haven't had Cold Stone in years, admittedly, but I remember it being like really, really, really good. Fresh one. What's going on? October is always a good month. Yeah, that's true. Late season, man. The bite is good. Corvina remind me of a speckled sea trout. They're tough fighting in light gear. Yeah, definitely. I put owner hooks on my jerk baits. Um, it's up my hook, hook up, up my hooked up ratio, and they just stick to it. Yeah, that's a good tip. Let's see. Yeah, so good stuff there, guys. Um, this weekend, I went to uh, Fisherman's Access, uh, the Fisherman's Access event. They had like, um, I don't know if they're moving into a new building or something, but they kind of had their own trade show, I guess. After Fred Hall fell through, they just decided, hey, we're going to do our own thing. So I got to go up there. Uh, represent slow death jigs in the um uh fisherman's access so jack let me come in uh, sell some product there and it was my first first event first show and it was really cool because i got to meet a lot of you guys um uh, steve mendoza came by uh michael tran came by benny came by it was just, it was just cool seeing a lot of the viewers come in and say what's up you know a lot of you guys in the chat um uh, who else have i missed you i know some more of you guys came in and said what's up so just sitting there trying to sell jigs and everybody's like oh it's so 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 like getting to put the face to some of you guys was really cool uh, and it was a good event i mean we sold a lot of product uh, a lot of people are hyped about it you know a lot of people don't even know still it, you know a lot of people don't understand uh, what the jigging is what slow pitch jigging is um and just uh, especially in la like san diego i think we're a little more on it I mean, just because you've been hearing people like myself talk about it for the last couple of years, but, and in our and MMFC has been, it's been the hot bait for a while, but like, even in LA, you know, people are like, oh, they're picking up the little jigs and they're like, oh, what do you catch on these things? And I'm like, oh, spotties and stuff. And they're like, oh, no way spotty. And they're, they're like tripping out and I show them pictures. Um, get that one 14 inch spot or 15 inch spotty I caught, uh, just the night before at spotty bowl on, uh, actually it was a 40 gram little 40 gram jig and they're tripping out on it, but it's totally cool. And then I, um, on Instagram, I've already seen a story. So some of the jigs that I sold, um, some of those guys were already hitting me up on Instagram. He was like, dude, I had two reds on the boat before anybody else had any fish. It was like, that's so awesome, man. I just love seeing that stuff. But then he said he lost his jig and I felt bad after like the third. Where's my jig? Oh, yeah so anyways he was looking um my big jig oh here it is yeah so anyways one of the guys told me he lost a jig he bought one he caught two big vermilions and then he lost it and i asked him how you rigged it 
So he he tied it on this side. So you guys tie. If, if you're fishing for rockfish with one of these, tie it on the same side. Do it right here. Instead of just tying it, just do a clip. So he had on the back and he was dropping it this way, which is it's, it's OK. Like it'll work. It'll, it'll catch fish. The only problem is you got these hooks. These hooks are going to snag, especially if you're fishing for rocks. So when you have it this way, you can still get snagged, but chances are a little lower. Like you're going to hit it. And as you're tapping and you're pulling up, ideally you're just bouncing the bottom and going. Because if you're sending it down this way, I mean, that's just, you're just, you're begging to get it. And they eat it like, then that, that's one of the differences though too. Because when you buy like the traditional flat falls and stuff, the eyes usually on the other side. And then you fish them like this. You, you fish them with the hooks down. Slow pitch jigs, you always go with the hooks Hooks on the same side. Just the way it flutters and falls, it's different. So if you guys do that, remember, hook to the eye side. Don't lose your jigs. Um, just remember that. I felt really bad. <laughs> See about a jig. But at least he caught fish. He slammed two big vermilion, so he was pumped. Um, so at least that's good. At least he didn't lose it without catching any fish. So. But yeah, it's just cool seeing the reaction, but it was nice meeting a ton of you guys again. It was freaking awesome. Eric Lehman, Oos, welcome to the show. Jessica, how's the little Mudo doing? She's good. Am I a vet? No, I'm not. I am not. There are many in here, though. I know Dave Rage, uh, Cal, I believe, and anyone else. Give a shout out. Doug Rubin, El Sueño, Oos, welcome. Just telling everybody about that picture you sent, giving away the secrets, telling them Bluefin are here, man. Your buddy had like one pretty shallow. Worth TV, what's going on? Heading out in a minute, get rid of some old rice. Chum it up, man. Get those awful eye. What are you looking for? The big, big white sea bass. Don't forget the bologna. I hear that's the chum, the chum special. Oscar's a COD vet, yeah. Yeah, my Halo vet. <laughs> Michael Tran, what's going on, man? Nice meeting you this weekend. We were just talking about you meeting some of you guys. Totally awesome. So let's see, we got the, the bluefin. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, type them in the chat too. We'll get some more. Uh, so we got the bluefin, yellow teller in, the Corvina are popping. I got a bunch of questions on Instagram too. So we'll go over San Diego. Cal guy asked, what's the best way to catch big sand bass? Um, the easiest way is just go to the bait bars in San Diego and catch them. Um, the big ones in general are usually deeper. Um, there's lots of sand bass in San Diego Bay. Um, you can find them shallow, but they're usually the dinks. Um, they take five years, uh, about to be mature. And usually it's like 11 or, or 12 inches before they reach that point. So if you want the big ones, like those big, you know, 20 inches that we're catching, um, we catch them deep, either like off of a sport boat and in the bay, they're kind of hard to come by. You can get the small ones, uh, but the bait bar seems to be a, a pretty consistent place where you can get the big ones. They, they just, they know, they know where the food is. You know, the, whenever they fill up the bait receivers and, and they're refilling the boats with the bait, the bait falls down I mean, they're not dumb. They live there. You know, they, they eat that stuff. A lot of people go at night. I know that the acting does go a lot. If you follow them, a lot of those guys on Instagram that are posting the huge fish. Um, I get them during the day. If you check out my YouTube, um, unlimited legals, I think it was titled. I think I caught like, I don't, legit. It was like a dozen legal sand bass in like 20 casts or something. It was just, it was nuts. So I catch them during the day. Um, but in the Bay, I, the bait barge pretty much your best bet. You can get them anywhere. Sand bass are like that fish that, like, I can't tell you how many times I've just randomly cast in like San Diego Bay and I get a sand bass. Like if I'm bored and I'm going like going across the channel in my kayak, I don't even see Mark. Sometimes I just drop my jigs and boom, you get a sand bass. Like it, it happens so often. They're down there, uh, especially they're spawning. So sand bass spawn between April and May. So they're starting to spawn now, which means they're going to come in. And interestingly enough, they lay their eggs. Um, they're pelagic egg layers, so they don't lay them on the bottom. You know, they don't fertilize the eggs, everything like in the rocks. It Basically, they, they do it in open water. And <clears throat> they start leaving the rocks a little bit. Usually, they live by structure, a lot like spotties. But right now, when they spawn and when it's time to come out, they're actually out in the sand fields 
just in the middle. So right now is a good time to do it because they're probably just everywhere. They're starting to spawn and there's no, it's pretty much just wide open. It, you can probably find them anywhere. Just a nice soft bottom. You you can, you know, they're not as structure driven as like the spotty. Um, I guess that's why they're called the sand bass because they do live on the bottom. But usually with you, if you find them, you can find halibut, but they're, they're in the pretty soft area. Sometimes they're around where um, rockfish are, but usually in my experience, they're usually like outside of the rockfish zone, like rockfish are right on the rocks. And I tend to find the spotty or not the spotty the sand bass, like just on the outskirts. And that's where the halibut usually are too. Like wherever there's eel grass, they live in that sand on the outside, but because it's spawning, it is. And um, with that being said, don't be, don't be afraid to throw a, a big jig or a big bait. Sand bass are big. And they come up and smoke it. And a lot of times you'll get bit like 10 feet before you hit the bottom. So I find they're really aggressive and they come up and get it. They don't wait necessarily. Spotties tend to wait until it like kind of hits when it's close. Sand bass will come up. I've had, I've dead stick baits where they're just like bouncing there when I'm doing something like on my kayak. And I've had a, a jig just like just floating on my kayak like this. And they've come up and eaten it before. It's pretty crazy. <clears throat> but yeah, go big. Uh, don't be afraid to to go big if you're at the bait barge you can throw a 60 or 40 but i've thrown a 130 and 220s and gotten just massive sand bass they'll eat that thing no problem so if you want to catch a big one don't bother with the little stuff don't bother with the cut bait just throw a big jig um so you might not catch one but you're going to catch a big one when you do so if you want to catch a big one you got to be throwing something big enough the big ones will eat little baits but little fish will eat the little baits too that's the problem. So, uh, stick with the big one yeah, and just keep pounding it. Let's see here. <laughs> Cave dog, Benny Marino, try to find the 20 grams. Yeah, guys, I'm out of 20 gram jigs. Uh, may. Hey, do you have any more colors available for the 20 grand? We're out, dude. 20 grand. They're smoked. We're running thin on the other stuff, too. So if you guys want to uh, get them now, May is is the target date. Um, they've been making them. They're in the factory. I mean, they're getting turned out. We're getting an order is literally six times as big as we did. Um, so they're on it. It's just just a waiting game. You know, there's not much I can do. We're getting some new colors and stuff, too. Uh, new sizes for the tuna for the bluefin tuna and stuff so it's gonna be cool we're gonna have two different pro profiles and then a whole reorder of the uh, 20 gram 40 gram 60 gram with uh an added color so keep your fingers crossed for may we know we got to get those in man the 20 are like hey if you own 20s you guys are like you're, you're in the black market you should be selling some of those things because some of these crackheads are they're hitting me up like i have some secret stash of like 20 grams it's like i don't I've got a few for myself, but that's all I have. I don't have a uh, stock on it. So if you can find them, get them. Sweet talk somebody. Muto sold out of the 20 grams. Yeah. Um, but let me just tell you something, guys. I caught Quivera Basin when we had Spotty Bowl. Um, my biggest fish I caught on a 40 gram at the docks. Uh, 40 gram assassin. The assassin falls so slow, guys. You can fish the 40 there. This is the assassin. This one's a 20. It was on the gold too. Uh, fished a 40 gram in 20 feet of water. I was throwing it. And what was funny was I was doing okay. I, I think I'd caught my bag, but I didn't really have any big ones. And then once I started fishing the 40 gram at 20 feet, I got a 15. I got a 14 and a quarter. And I caught like six or seven fish in a row all on the 40 gram. And I was struggling with the 20. So don't sleep on the 40 guys. This 40 assassin will, will get bit at the dock. It seems crazy, right? Cause you're like, Oh, it's 20 feet of water. That's like our thinking is like foot per gram. But the assassin, the sumo, I, I don't know. I've, I've actually caught a, a, a spotted baby bass on a 60 gram sumo in 20 feet of water. Um, so they'll eat it. It's not like you don't have to be tied to the 20 gram. The 40 gram works. Uh, it's a bigger profile too. So we go back to that whole thing. It's like, if you're looking for the bigger fish, do not be afraid to, to throw a 40. They'll, they'll still eat it. And that's how I caught my biggest ones during Spotty Bowl. I mean, I didn't win, but uh, did okay. Did all right. 
Cal, any size is heavier than the 220 grams in the future. Yeah, Cal, we've got a 400, 500, and 600 gram. And we got two different styles. We've got the Ogre and the Samurai coming in. They're tuna jigs designed for like tuna and big fish. They're, they're badass. There's one question I got in LA a lot. Everybody was asking if I was going to have heavier jigs, but yeah, we're getting there. Dude, for real. I salty. I can't tell you how much I get hit up about the 20 grams, dude. It's like, and I knew they were going to go, but do we order more 20 grams than we did this time than 50, 60s? Right. We didn't order as much as the other ones. Yeah. So we ordered. So last time we ordered kind of an even amount because in order to get so many colors made, I had to do like minimum orders, you know, but this go around, we ordered a lot more twenties than we did forties and sixties. Although the forties and sixties and stuff, they're getting more popular because now La Jolla is opening up, um, selling these big ones too, like crazy. So it's like the more, now that we're fishing like deeper waters and getting out there more, the, the bigger stuff's becoming more prominent. But yeah, those 20 grams in the winter were like, it's the only thing working. Never fish slow pitch jigs. How are you working these in the bay? Hold on, I got your video. Uh, yeah, I got a video for these things, dude. Jessica's going to post it in the link. I just did one like two, three weeks, maybe a month ago. I'll tell you exactly how I do it. Rods, technique. I'll walk you down how I do it in the pilings. Um, show you how I catch the fish. So we got you covered on there, man. Let's see. Eric has a massive stash. Has a massive stash. I do. I, I sent somebody to Eric. I'm like, Hey, if you need some, go hit up Eric Lehman. He might hook you up. I mean, you probably have to buy him, but just sell him for 50 bucks a pop, Eric. <laughs> Let's see. Air big water wants. A deep dive on opali, yellowtail, white sea bass. Yeah, I'll put one of those together for sure. I, maybe next week I'll do a deep dive in one of those species. I need to do one for sure. What did we do? We did the spotty and the halibut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll definitely do one for uh, maybe the yellowtail. Patrice one one three eight asked Dars or anaconda. Um, personally, I prefer the anaconda choke as opposed to the Dars choke. Um, She's talking jujitsu, <laughs> Brazilian jujitsu. They're very similar chokes. They're just, they're, used, they're like a front headlock style choke. Um, I haven't done darts choke that much. Maybe that's why. So I typically go for the anaconda. Honestly, out of in that situation where you're going for a front attack, I'm throwing on the guillotine for sure. Probably the Armin guillotine. Uh, if that fails, usually I go to the anaconda choke though. I don't know. It just is so tight when you roll underneath them. It's lights out. I think I just got to practice the darts more, but I haven't learned it from like a real good person. So, or a person that's like really taught the darts. So it's just not really in my arsenal, but I, so I'll, I'll say Anaconda choke is my go-to. And if that's not it, guillotine, the guillotine's good because it, not only is it a blood choke, but it like, it crushes their throat too. So you hear them like snorting and gagging as you're like throwing the choke on. <laughs> It's pretty satisfying. So you're like, it's an asphyxiation. So you're being choked from your throat and it's cutting the, the blood off your carotid artery. It's, this, it's the two for you get the double combo. You get the windpipe choke and you get the blood choke. It's savage. It's not one you want to be in. I got somebody in one and he tried so hard to get out. He broke his teeth because they were grinding. He was trying to get his head out. Because he was a black belt. I'm a brown belt. And I think, actually, I might have been a purple belt at the time. And I got him in such a deep guillotine. He didn't want to be submitted by a lower belt. He literally broke his teeth and was spitting pieces of his teeth out. We were done with the roll because he was grinding him to pull his head out so bad. Because he didn't want to be. <laughs> he didn't want to get submitted. I was like, damn, that's savage. <laughs> that's hardcore. Let's see. Slow pitch jig for beginners. Who is this? Dopey George. Slow pitch jig for beginners. What do I need for the bay? Boats off inshore and offshore. Want to try slow pitch jig? Um, George, I would just say get a, for me, I would get a, a spinning rod. You don't need a specific rod for the bays. I would say like an M1 inshore spinning rod or anything stiff with, with some backbone. I, you don't want to go like a Phoenix feather with something that's too light. I go something with a little more girth and backbone to it because you're usually fishing structure and then you don't want to be able to pull them off. Plus you don't really need that, that slow pitch action up the column with the little stuff, especially if you're fishing sub 40 feet. So I'd say 250 or 
2000 was at 2500 2500 uh, spinning reel and then a pretty decent rod you can get a slow pitch rod um i got the custom one big water's pimping himself out over here got the big water rod look at the design on these things he made this for me so if you guys check out big water rod company big water yak he's in the chat here but uh, he made this for me it's a rain shadow blank i think the rain shadows are made on the east coast um but yeah th this thing's badass so i used it this weekend and it's it's got perfect backbone and it's a slow pitch rod too so it's still got the bend but it's not as noodly and it's crisp and it just flicks those things off the ground so that's a good option um you know probably selling those for like 375 or something which is still a good deal for fuji guides all custom made but if you want a cheaper option just do like a you don't even need a phoenix rod you, you can pretty much get like a cheaper pen or shimano or something like that and then for offshore i would say just get a um get something within 100 gram to 250 gram jigs and that should cover you for that same rod and that that 100 gram to 250 gram jig weight that'll cover you for like rockfish uh, Benito, even yellowtail, small yellowfin. I mean, no problem. Uh, it's not going to do the big cow bluefin, but it'll get you most tuna, even up to like, I'd say like probably 30, 40 pounds. It'll do it. Um, so probably just that one rod. And the good thing about slow pitch jigging is you don't need every, the action is in the rod and then the jig itself. So you, you don't need a lot of gear. And that's one of the things that I love about slow pitch jigging. Like you can take this jig on the same rod, say it's, I take a 100 gram to 300 gram rod with this jig, I can fish it anywhere. What I mean by that is if the captain's like, hey, we're going to go rock fishing, I just drop this down to the bottom and I bounce it and I catch rockfish. If captain goes, hey, or you're out on a bro boat, pirate, private boat or whatever, and you're like, hey, there's yellowtail, uh, yellowfin, 150 feet under the boat. With the same rod and the exact same lure, you can catch those fish. You just come up the water column 150 feet where they are and then you're working it then you're working it through the column like there is no you don't have to go grab like um a whole nother setup you don't have to change the jigs it's like this everything eats the slow pitch it's crazy so when you're offshore like you don't need like that many setups you know you don't need the the rock fishing rod if you're doing live bait right you're hooked up with a dropper loop and it's on one rod and then you got to put that away and then you go get your your yellowtail one, well, what if you get it and it's set up for a fly line? So that means all it has is a hook on it. Well, you can't fly line 250 feet. So then you get your other rod or you put like a rubber band weight on it so you can get down there. Man, you got the jig. It's like, it doesn't, doesn't matter what the species is. doesn't matter where they are. As long as you know where, the, where they are, you can work it within the column and get it bit. And I think that's one of the most awesome things about it. Just wherever the fish are, that's where you work in the jig. But uh, just I, one thing I would recommend on your setup is your braid, your PE line, make sure it's thin, make sure you get at least eight X. Uh, that's a braid with eight carriers, eight separate lines. Uh, I always talk about it. I can't stress that enough. You want the roundness. You want the thinness. Don't get a bulky overkill line because the deeper you get, that jig is just going to get away from you. It's, it's going to kite out. It's going to take a lot of the slack uh, in the current. It's just not as good. So you can get away with thin line braid strong too. the tinsel strength on braid. Like if, it, if that thing says 15 pounds, it's, it's probably not going to break to like 30 pounds or something. Uh, and then a mono leader, obviously. And then, yeah, I mean, those two rods should cover you from like 20 gram to 250 gram. And then if you decide, you know, you're really into it, you can get like the Phoenix Titan rods. You know, they're like 350 or, or more bucks. Um, they got acid wrap guides and all that. But even Penn makes a, um, I think the Penn Battalion's making... Uh, slow pitch rods now they're, they're pretty reasonable i mean 150 bucks you can get one so there's definitely a lot more a lot more options are starting to come out for sure and then you got custom makers like uh big water rod company I'm making a few out there if you want to go that route Let me catch up on the chat here uh, shout outs um michael tran e chris hurtado and dario e chris hurtado what's going on welcome to the show dario welcome Oos. Michael Tran. Yeah, we got Michael Tran. Yeah, okay, okay. We've met Michael Tran. We're all about it. Submission pitching code jujitsu video. I have a I have a short on YouTube. If you can check it out. 
I don't know if you saw that one. I did a uh, Kimura trap and then a uh, inverted knee bar during training. It was, it was pretty cool. Doing some live sparring. Dave gets it. Spinning or conventional is your preference. Um, so for light, Michael, for 40 and under, I, I prefer spinning. When I'm going over that, I go conventional. And um, kind of let me explain the, um, we'll get deep into this a little bit. So when, when we're fishing light, let's say in the bays, um, 50, 30 feet or less, we're using smaller jigs, 20 gram, 40 gram, sometimes a 60 gram, but we'll say 20, 40, even 10 grams sometimes. Well, when you're, if we're fishing 20 feet, I want that jig, I want the jig to flutter the whole way. So in order to achieve that, I think the lighter spinning reel is better because the line just flies off the bail. Uh, that's how Kevin Nakata, the Sea Samurai, has been doing it. Um, he's been crushing it, guys. He's what one first in shore, I think, like a couple times. He got second. He had some big numbers, and he's just fishing a spinning rod, just like me. Um, the same jigs, uh, slow slow death jigs, and he's just letting them fall. A lot, a lot of people are on here, and the spinning reel just it has the least resistance I find to let the jig flutter down as best it can. Because I don't want any resistance when it's going down. Now, when I'm fishing deeper, um, rockfish or even pelagics, a, a conventional reel is better. One, for one reason is I don't care about the flutter. I, I'm usually not looking for the flutter on the way down. If I'm going for rockfish, I want the jig to the bottom as quickly as possible. And if I'm fishing for tuna, if the captain says they're they're 150 feet down, I'm dropping 150 feet down as quickly as possible. And for rockfish, I'm fishing uh, getting to the bottom as quickly as possible. Then I'm working the jig. You know, I'm not the the flutter is only a bay thing. That's like a hybrid style that we do here. We're and traditionally when you're on a boat, it's that's where you're doing a traditional slow pitch where you're lifting it. The jig is you lifting the jigs coming up and it flutters. You lift the jig comes up and it flutters. You lift the jig comes up and it flutters and the jig gets bit when it's horizontal. So you're working the jig at, at that point, a conventional because because it doesn't matter because the flutter is not reliant on you just letting it, it, it flutter down. The, the flutter comes and the pitch comes after you've lifted it and you just follow your rod down. It really has nothing to do with letting the spool off the line. So if that makes sense. So when I'm going light in the bays, uh, spinning reel and then conventional. So you can either do bait caster, like pretty heavy duty bait caster, or you can do conventional. Uh, I've got both. I've got like a setup that's like uh, 350 gram. And then I bought one that goes all the way up to 500 gram jigs. And I've got a heavy as duty conventional reel on that thing because then as I'm reeling and pumping, it's doing the work. I'm not worried so much about the flutter. Um, cause you're working it through the zone. And once I'm past the zone, boom, I'm dropping it again. Um, or I'm just long, long fall jigging it where I'm not reeling. I'm just lifting, letting it flutter, lifting, letting it flutter, but I'm not having to worry about the line coming off of the reel to create the flutter. I know it's kind of a, long explanation, but hopefully that works. So small, I'd say 40 gram under I'm going spinning. Uh, anything larger than that, I'm probably going conventional just for the nature of where we're fishing. Yeah. Dario's got the pen battalion. Not bad for, yeah, dude, I've seen that rod. That's nice. That's a good, that's a good rod. What color and size jigs would you recommend for Yellowtail? Um, the 130 uh, and 220 gram color. It's just, it just, it depends, you know, on the day. Um, you know, we got them on the last year on the boat. And I think it was the, the snow cone color, like the one with the blue and the pink was pretty hot. Uh, the white's been getting killed <laughs> so far this year, uh, at least on the rockfish, but, um, I'd say darker, you know, you kind of go like sunrise, sunset, uh, probably the red's pretty good. Uh, the white you know, is a good color. It, really, the color is like, um, I don't think it's as important as the um, the fall in the profile for sure, but definitely 130 or 220. So if they're, if they're up high and shallow, 130, but if they're down deep, 220. And again, that just comes down to, you know, having to get down there as quickly as you can. <clears throat> Yeah, but <laughs> Benny Marino, I better start working overtime to afford higher end gear. Fishing's so expensive, dude. It's like, it's crazy. But it's any hobby, right? No matter what you do, if there's like a hobby you're really into, like, 
golf crazy expensive it's like shooting is like really expensive i don't know any hobby that's not expensive you playing video games is expensive it's just rc car it, anything you do is just it's crazy off-roading oh man that's a huge one <clears throat> have i tried the b fs reels no i haven't they have less resistance interesting yeah you can get them um like salty changed the bearings like on his and they work pretty well and like when you have a reel like a we're talking about like bait casters and conventional guys like the bearings when they're like new dude they work for the little stuff and it's because they like fly off but then they start getting gummed up and then when you clean it it's good again and they work i'm not i'm not saying they don't work the guys on here do fish i did for like a year i fished a bait caster and was getting crushed on it it's not not saying they don't work uh but if i want to optimize them going spinning it's just it seems like after a couple weeks or whatever if you didn't clean it it's like the, the spool is just not coming off as fast it, it's a lot of maintenance the spinning reel it's like i don't i don't really have to worry about it but yeah you, you can do it you can get away with it and you can change bearings so if you really like bait caster and you just don't want to go spinning you can get away with it. You can definitely do it. I started my tuna journey with a hundred dollar pen. Dude, hell yeah. So I tell people like, it's funny. I have pictures from like years ago where I've got my, uh, I got my Walmart Shakespeare special where it was like, dude, it was legit probably like 40 bucks for the combo. <laughs> it came with the real and the thing I probably bought at Walmart. Dude, you just get out there with what you got, man. And the cheap stuff works, you know, it, it really does. If you know how to fish is really the other, when you start getting into the higher end, it's just like, we like it, right? It's, it's our passion. We like just having nice things, but, um, a, a lot of that lower end stuff will work unless you're going for like mega bluefin, but you'd be surprised what you can get it done with. I mean, you think about fishing in the history, it's like, do people used to fish with just like sticks, sticks in line, like. You think fluorocarbon and monofilament were like a thing back in the day? It was like, no, they were straight up using like rope, rope and hooks and on stuff. And they, they still got bit. It's like, it's crazy. Or the uh, Cuban yo-yo where it's just a ring, right? And you throw it down with some line on it, reel it on over your hand, still gets bit. It's crazy. Yeah, you, you don't need the expensive stuff, guys. But it doesn't help. Hurt. hurt. It does help. It doesn't hurt. It's not until you start really like getting into the upper echelon of fishing. Then you'll start to like feel the nuance, you know, and stuff like that. You're like, oh, this is, I can feel the difference with this. Stuff like that. Let's see. The new Michael Tran question the new tuna jigs with or without hooks. Um, we took the hooks off of the 220 we're going to leave them on the 130 but the big ones will not have hooks yeah we're not we're just going to sell them without hooks because most people like to rig them up themselves we find uh, even people are buying the 220 gram and they're like they're taking the hooks off and then doing like the big mustad hook and putting like custom leaders on it huge you know crimping on like 100 pound leader and stuff like that and i find people like I do too. Like I, you kind of like to customize how, how you want to hook it. Some people like one hook. Some people like two. Some people like the double on each end. <clears throat> so yeah, the big ones will be, will be without hooks. Fast action. Benny Moreno. Fast action. 10 to 20 pound line inshore. Yeah, dude, that's perfect. Medium heavy. Yeah. I, I, I think that's a, that'd be a perfect rod for sure. Spinning a conventional, we got that one. What color size and jigs? Yeah, I think I got all the questions. Let's see. In the bay, I also use bait caster. Yeah, Dario. This dude uses bait caster for everything. You're talking uh was it quarter ounce Ned Rig? He's throwing the bait caster. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> if it works, it works. Hey, if you can you can learn to use it, it's like you can for sure. That's funny. Use a soda can. You probably could. That's, that's what I'm saying, man. Everything freaking works. 
Eric Klein says, Muto, do you find it difficult to feel the bite on the drop when using a spinning reel? Um, I mean, with if you're if we're talking about the jigging in general, you don't really feel the bite until they're already on. Um, if that makes sense, like because they bite it when it's usually already slacked out. So usually they'll they'll have eaten it, and it's not until like I reel it in a couple cranks to take the slack out and lift it i realize the fish is on that's what the assist hooks do when, if they've hit this thing they're usually hooked when they smack it with their mouth or they like they come up and eat it they're usually already on so you're not having to you really don't need to feel the bite um with with this when they've got like the two assist hooks these things zap them i think that's probably why they're called assist hooks you know you don't they're not like they're swallowing it and you've got to set it it's like they come up and even if it like hits them in the face it usually like one hooks in the lip and then the other one goes in, or if they just like bite it, they don't come off of it. So you're not really looking for uh, the bite. The only time you really feel the bite is if you're coming up like on a rockfish a lot, you'll like lift and they, they, they'll pull it back down. They'll come up and get it. Sand bass will do that too. But uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Like if you haven't felt it, it's like, it's different than like fishing a Ned rig or like a, like a paddle tail or an underspin, you know, where you're casting it and you're constantly feeling that tension, you know, and you're like feeling the bumps on the bottom or you're letting it fall. And right when, when you feel that, you know, you're, you're going to do a hook set. It's just, it's a different style. Yeah. So it's hard to say you, if you, if you feel the bite, you're not, you don't really, you don't, you don't know you have the bite. You usually know you have the bite when you like taking the slack out and you're like, Oh, there's a fish on it. It's like, it surprises you every time. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's totally like, um, counter to what we're used to, right? When you're, like when I first started, when I first got my kayak, it was like, I did the drop shot first and then <clears throat> I did the Ned rig for a while. And that's what you're talking about, right? You just, you wait for the bite, you're waiting and you, you feel it and then, then you set it. It's, it, it's totally weird. You're like, you just throw it out there and then it's like a blind bite. You don't know you have it till it's, till it's already hooked. That's pretty cool. Caught lots on a Cuban yo-yo in Florida. Nice dude. I bought one. I got to go out there and fish it. I just wanted to see what it was like. I was going to slow pitch with the Cuban yo-yo. Figured to make a good video. I got it downstairs. I just spooled it up with a monofilament. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Cuban yo-yo works. Yeah, I figured because it's like, it's got to be the same thing, right? You're just dropping the line. It's the reel that, that's different because there's no reel. For those guys that don't know, you just hold it in your hand. It's just a ring that's like a con with a concave and you just... You wrap your hand around it. Like you hold the line in your hand and you wrap it. It's pretty crazy. Zachary Riggs. All right, I'm here. Glad you could join us, dude. Welcome to the show. <clears throat> Trying to go through your YouTube library. Do you have any tutorials on the yellow tail? I don't, Michael. Only, um, I don't even think I have tuna tutorials. I have yellow fin ones on there where I've caught some yellow fin and I think I did catch a yellowtail when we went out with Dave Rage. I don't know which video that was, but not. But I don't have a tutorial on it, unfortunately. Hopefully, we'll go out there and get someone they're blowing up. We've been looking for them out. I went last, was it last week or the week before? Actually, when I did the rock fishing video, we were looking for yellowtail, me and Kevin Nakata. But we saw the boils. We didn't get on them. But um, definitely, I can if we can find them. You just drop it, dude, when they're under the boat. Just drop the jig and work it through the column. You know, when you, you see them going underneath. Or if they're around or you, like you see a boil. Let's see. Love my yo-yo reels. Caught my last decent. MLB. What is M? What is MLB? Largemouth bass. <laughs> it shows you how much freshwater I fish. Like zero. I'm assuming that's what that means. Yeah, I throw a quarter ounce jig on my bait caster all the time. I know you do. We were talking about that. It was freaking hilarious, dude. I don't even know how you even feel that thing. That's funny. Zach is here. We can start now. It's funny. The best is I just feel weight. Yeah. My favorite slow death jig is a sumo. Sumo's no joke, dude. A lot of people. That's been the hot one. A lot of people been fishing. Uh, I've still been doing pretty good on the um, the assassin too, though. I just mix it up. Or you like the 40, the 40 sumo, 40 dude, that's, that's awesome. 
Yeah, I was telling people you've been fishing those at the docks too, uh, Zach. I know a lot of people are like shy to, to fish anything heavier, but I do. It's been working. And you just bought four of them, four forty grams. So nice. Quick, guys. Majority of my rods are ugly sticks. Dude, the ugly sticks are the bomb. The the ugly that tiger stick. I take that one offshore with me all the time. They've got that weird um like fiberglass tip that like nobody else has, but it's super sensitive. If you're just um drop shotting like for bait, I, I think that rod's awesome. It's you can feel everything on that thing. Don't sleep on the ugly stick. Yeah, ugly stick tiger is awesome, dude. Hell yeah. And that's not even the it's not their bargain one. Well, that's still one like 75 bucks. It is like their upper echelon, but uh do you roll more gi or no gi? Uh, these days, gi. When I first started jujitsu, like yeah, 10, 12 years ago, I did primarily no gi at the beginning, but the last five years has been pretty much all gi. Some no gi in between, but it's been mostly gi. <laughs> That's funny. Excited to go. Yeah, 40 gram sumo's fire. Yeah, John too. Dude, check out this dude's Instagram. John's always killing it. So you're using the 40 as well. Interesting. Yeah. I'm telling you, you, you don't just have to stick to the to the 20 gram. 40 will do it. All good. I'm excited to get some big ones with you. I guess see what else. All right, guys. <clears throat> so the only thing I did want to cover is the league coming up. So there's if you guys are part even if you're, I, didn't, I don't even think you don't have to be any any part of MMFC or anything like that, but there's a fishing tournament going on. Um, it's a WFT league, and it's a team league, and it's basically how many fish you can catch within an allotted time zone. And the first, first tournament is this week, and it's a team tournament, so you got to have a partner. And uh, this one's going off, I believe, Saturday. So there's been kind of some questions about, like, ruling and stuff like that. I just joined. I wasn't going to join because I got a baby on the way. I got a whole bunch. Of, I didn't want to commit to somebody and do it. Um, Brian likes to fish hit me up. And he's like, hey, let's go wreck these clowns. I'm like, dude, if we got to do it, we got to do it. So <clears throat> me and Brian are going to do it. But it's perfect because he's like, um, he can't do them all either. So we're just going to kind of do it for fun. We're, we're not like a a team that's going to fish it every single time. But uh, yeah, me and Brian likes to fish are going to join in. So we're going to have our team. We're going to let you guys play this week, let you do what you do, and then, then we'll come in for the next one. I'll try to get that win. Uh, so let's, I just wanted to go through some of the rules and stuff like that. Uh, the team consists of two anglers. Uh, first event will be a Royal Rumble. First team to catch 100 fish will become the champions and will win the tag team title. Real belts are being made. These belts are badass if you guys haven't seen them. They're made by TB Metal Art, uh, who's in the chat here, and who made this um, jig behind me, this metal piece. He made the belts, guys. These things are cool. Um, it's 100% of the entry fee for that event will go to the champions. League fees are $40 event per team. Uh, second event of the champions will automatically win uh, half the pot because they are the champions. If there's a new champion, they will win the other half of the pot. So if you keep, if you win again, you'll get the half automatically. Uh, cash will be due at the start of the event. We'll be fishing different areas of the bay, like there are different arenas around the world. Pictures will be submitted on your team's Discord page um, using color-coded counters that I will provide. Most fishing outings after the first one will be a time period of unknown hours at the same time. Whoever has the most fish after this period will be the new champs. Uh, if one of the current champions cannot attend the event, the other champion will have to defend his title on his own. If both champions cannot make it, they will be stripped of their title and receive no money because they did not defend their titles. Uh, the teams that catch the most will win the whole pot. Only artificials are allowed to be used, and the rig is only artificials allowed with more than one jig on it. Oh, the A-rig. I'm sorry. The A-rig is the only artificial allowed. So uh, two rigs are allowed on the same rod. Only one rod at a time to be used. No trolling is allowed. I, I'm interpreting that as they are probably trying to outlaw the sabiki, <laughs> I think is the guess. Um, so you can do the A-rig with more and you control, but you can't just drop. So this first event, what's that? No, it's a, no, it says trolling. Trolling is allowed. Um, so the schedule. So this week, uh, guys, you can, so you can only fish um, America's Cup. So 4, 9, 
2022. This is Saturday. Uh, meet up at Shelter Island Beach area. Team fees due at this time. Each angler will be given a counter. Fish and counter needed to be in the pick. Single rigs, double rigs, and A rigs are allowed to be used. Trolling is allowed. Bait fish such as mackerel, lizard, smelt, etc. cannot be targeted, but will count if you catch one. There will be a 10 p.m. deadline. If no one, if no one team catches 100 fish, then it will go to whatever team has the most. In case of a tie, there will be a fish off between those teams to whichever team partners both catch a fish first. Uh, must fish within the boundaries of the map within America's Cup. And I've got, let me see here. I've got Eric's finely crafted picture here. So this is America's Cup, guys. This is the only place you can fish. So if you have your teams, those are the rules. Uh, and first one to 100 fish wins. If you don't get 100, it's it's the most. So I know there was a lot going on with that. I won't be fishing this event because my partner will be at the SBS. Um, and you can find that on the Discord. Eric to Judge Lehman, he's in the chat. He could probably get you. He's right here too. Trolling is allowed, yes. Oh, Eric's in the show. I didn't think he was going to be here. Um, so if you have any questions, ask Eric. Um, if you want the link, he could probably get you in there. And that's going on this Saturday. <clears throat> and... I asked Eric because I told him I was going to go over it. I wanted him to be on here, but he said he was busy working. I mean, obviously he's working hard watching the show, working on cars. Um, but I asked him if there's anything, anything he wants me to cover specifically. And the only thing he said is smack talking is a requirement. So you must talk trash WWE style as part of the game. So if you're if you're thin skinned, uh, you can't take jokes. It's fun, guys. It's all in good fun. Nobody's trying to hurt anybody's feelings. Though. Exactly started. But um, you know, the, don't take it to heart. It's it's just joking around. So if somebody's talking trash to you when they they bring up this event, it's it's not meant to be hurtful. It's part of the game. So that's why you don't have to join. You don't have to be part of it. But if you are a team, do it. It's on. The trash talk is coming. Exactly. So. so yeah, Zach's gonna throw bananas at the competition. It's gonna be like Mario Kayak. Mario Kart on kayaks. <clears throat> I was, sorry, dude. That's, I thought the same thing. I was like, America's Cup's not that big. <laughs> Hopefully nobody fishes their next body bowl. It's going to be like a nuclear bomb went off. <laughs> it decimated every fish in the, the corner. I don't know how many teams there are, but yeah, that's that's a lot of fish, man. This is freaking crazy. I, th I thought the same thing. But that's what the judge wants it. Eric Lehman, he hates fish. He does not want to see fish in America's Cup. <laughs> So this is how we're gonna we're gonna scare them out of there. Maybe that's a, maybe that's the tactic. You fish so many, you get caught when you throw them back. They just they leave and they go somewhere else. So maybe it's like we're tactically farming or seeding the other areas with the release fish. Let's see. Jesse had a question. If my father were to fly down to fish tuna for the first time, what would be the best time of year and the best trip to take? It depends what kind of tuna. Bluefin tuna or yellowfin tuna? Bluefin tuna, uh, I would say now, historically, now until June, probably the end of June. And yellowfin, usually end of summer, till, they usually stay pretty late till after October. Um, best bet is a day and a half trip. Two days if you can do it. Um, if it's in the middle of summer, like um, July, August, even September, you can sometimes do a one day trip down to Mexico, but it's like, um, it's a long day and you, you can get them. They, they are usually there. We, we've done it. But if you do a day and a half trip, it's almost a guarantee because you go deep enough. They're, they're always South. They're always far South. So that's like, like the surefire way, go on a day and a half or a two day trip. Make sure you've gone way down there. Um, like when it comes to summer, you can get lucky. Right. Like this year, it was in June. They were boiling up just a mile offshore, even Carlsbad and Oceanside. They were freaking everywhere. Um, but that's not really a guarantee. Guarantee is like they're going to be down there south into Mexico. And if you get on a day and a half, two day boat, you're probably going to find them. So earlier in the year, bluefin. Later in the year, yellowfin. Ahi, ahi tuna. So traditionally, it was different last year. The bluefin stuck around and the yellowfin bite wasn't that good last year. So. Um, 
Hopefully that advice helps you. Oh, in the chat. Looks like the chat was helping you out too. So hopefully that got you. Yeah, guys. So I just wanted to cover that. It's a cool team event. And um, hopefully I'll be in on the next one. Everybody else that does it. Hopefully you guys have fun. Look forward to seeing the trash talk and everything. Let's see. If you... Yeah, guys, in two weeks. Trivia night, I think still till next month. Uh, in two weeks, I'll be broadcasting from Florida. I'll be out there again. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to go fishing this time, book the boat, as long as it doesn't rain or have a hurricane. Uh, but yeah, now that the place is all set up, it's got furniture, internet. it's got internet, it's good to go this time. So it'll be be just like a regular show. So I'll be in Florida in two weeks. Um, yeah, we'll go for that. We've got the um, trip. When, what day is that? September 24th. So se- September 24th. This is important, guys. We've got the submission at sea. Uh, it's going down. So the 24th of September. So I just want to give you guys a heads up. It's locked in. Uh, I think the down payment's been paid on the boat. Um, we're going on the Malahini. It's going to be an all-day trip. Uh, we're going to be giving away. I think the price is going to be 300 bucks a person. You're going to get jigs. There's going to be seminars. You're going to get a food ticket. You're going to get a drink ticket. Uh, we're getting other sponsors. There's going to be giveaways. Uh, it's going to get you like a raffle ticket and a, a full day of fishing. So we're going all-day fishing. Um, I think we're waiting for clarification on passports. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It really depends where the fish are. It it depends. I think kind of the time of year we, we don't have the crystal balls. I would probably get a passport. Um, if you don't have one, um, there's limited spots available. Now we're going to put them on sale next week. I think when the show comes around, we'll have it on the website where you just buy them. You'll just buy the ticket online, uh, from our website, submissionfishing.com. And uh, it's pretty limited spots. I think we've got like 25 spots or something. So there's not many. Um, I'm going to release it to you guys first. So uh, it'll go live here next week um, on the show. And then you can buy. And then I'll wait like a week or two. And then if they didn't sell out, I'll just I'll put it on Instagram and let everybody else come in. So you guys get first priority. I mean, it should be fun. I think it's going to be an awesome event. Uh, we're still getting sponsors and working out a lot of stuff. Um, so it's going to be like a... It'll be a whole event, not just a fishing thing, right? Like we're going to fish. Uh, you guys are going to get some of the new jigs we got coming in. So that's included in the cost. Like I said, food. Uh, it'll be cool. You know, rod rentals are not included. I'm assuming everybody here has got rods. So it's like, you know, you're on your own for your license and rods. Uh, if you want to drink like 40 beers, you're on your own for that. We'll, we'll probably give you a, a ticket for one or two. Um, and then you guys can trade them. That's like a, we'll do the the ticket cryptocurrency. You'd be able to trade those around for, um, for, for stuff like that. So that's going down. I'm uh, super excited. So just want to let you guys know, mark your calendars uh, and get ready for next week. So those of you that want to go, I want to make sure that you get in. So I'm going to give you guys a, a time to like be prepared and stuff like that, figure it out. So I want you guys to have first dibs on, on the spots and then we'll go from there. So next week, look for that. We'll launch it. Damn, you beat me to Florida this year. Awesome. Good luck and be safe out there on the water. Thank Bass Tech TV. Welcome to the show. Yeah, we're going out. Um, I bought a place in St. Augustine, Florida, and I talked to the captain. And I just told him I want to do a YouTube video. I was like, hey, I want to go jigging. So he said he'll take me to a reef. You know, we can jig and stuff. I want to test some of these jigs out there, uh, slow death jigs. And it's pretty cool. So hopefully we get on some red snapper or could be a kingfish. Man, so many fish out there. So that'll be fun. Hopefully we get on the water last time. You guys remember what happened last time I went out? It was got that rainstorm and, and couldn't make it happen. So it's crazy. What's the date? <clears throat> 20. I already forgot. 924. I put it in there. Oh, 9, 924. September 24th. Captain Dan. And I are still in the CC. Yeah, Captain Dan. So we, you've, we've got time. Um, next week, we'll go live with it. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up so you know. So it's not like a surprise now and then they like sell out or something. So. Uh, you guys will get first first dibs. I know Captain Dan. I, I just want to let you know we changed the date for you. We were going what the 18th. I think we were going the 17th, and then you were like, oh, "I can't go till after the 20th." So we had the we, we switched the date. So if you don't show up, I'm never eating your pizza again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. As long as you're doing a CCA event, we'll be there. <clears throat> Jump on the boat, salty. Yeah, guys, dude, it'll be badass. It'll be cool with a bunch of you guys. Plus, I want to see, like, hopefully we have rods and stuff to give away. And I'm going to find some good prizes, too. So it'll be pretty awesome. 
Air client headed to Florida tomorrow. Dude, you're going to go fishing? Hell yeah. Let me want to know where where do you get info on the spotty comp? Um, Judge, do you have a link? You can throw it in there. Um, the only thing I, the only place I've seen it is on Discord. So I don't know if I can get a link to that. Let me see if I can. Because I don't know if I'm a moderator on there. But um, I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll put it in the um, in the comments. Even when the show's done, we'll like um, we'll put it in the comments for you. We'll get you the link, and then you can join through there. Or honestly, I don't know because I, I don't make the rules. But I, you could probably show up. I judge is pretty open and cool. I, I don't think you have to be part of the Discord to be honest with you. If you show up at um, let's see here. If you show up with a teammate, teammate April 9th uh, at 6.30 at Shelter Island Beach area. So Shelter Island Beach area, 6.30. If you have a teammate, I think you just pay to go in. You don't need to be be a part of the Discord or anything, I don't think. Well, yeah, actually, you will to submit pictures. But once you're there, you can get in. So um, I imagine you can do that. They'll, they'll make it work for you. Judge is pretty cool. <clears throat> but it is a, a partner contest. All right, guys. Thanks for joining. If you don't have any more questions, it was an honor having you all here again. I love hanging out with you guys. Um, hopefully you're fishing this weekend. I know a lot of you guys are doing the tournament. Uh, Salty Dangler and Brian Likes to Fish are doing the SBS tournament this week. So good luck to you guys. Uh, they're going to represent submission fishing jigs out there along with some other people. Not other people, but their other, I think, cool baits and stuff with the, their other sponsors. So uh, looking forward to you guys. Hopefully you slay it on there. Um, if you want to buy some jigs, submissionfishing.com. We got apparel, we got jigs, obviously all that good stuff. And, um, thanks for supporting the stream. Thanks for liking the stream. And then, uh, just thanks for being here guys. And if you have any questions for future shows, just let me know and we'll see you guys on the next one. Slow pitch everything. Oos.